This book delves into the theology of assurance of Thomas Boston, who is arguably the most influential Scottish theologian pastor of the 18th century. My first encounter with Thomas Boston was in Sinclair Ferguson's book *The Whole Christ*, where Ferguson discusses the Merrow controversy and its enduring relevance. The Merrow controversy was an 18th-century ecclesiastical dispute in Scotland, where the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland censored the book *The Merrow of Modern Divinity*, published in 1645, due to its teachings on assurance and the nature of the gospel. Thomas Boston and eleven other Scottish ministers protested against this decision. Although Ferguson's book does not serve as a biography or theological portrait of Boston, it sparked my interest in studying Boston's biography and comparing his theology with that of the Merrow of Modern Divinity. Exploring Thomas Boston's theology of assurance is intriguing, because assurance has been a long-term focus of my research, and Boston. As an influential theologian, pastor has significant insights on this subject. Within the book, I examined Boston's theology of assurance in six dimensions: trinitarian, covenantal, christological, soteriological, ecclesiastical, and sacramental. It is important for offering fresh perspectives on Boston's theology in general and his doctrine of assurance in particular. The book argues that Boston's doctrine of assurance centers on union and communion with Christ, the central principle of his theology. It also provides an alternative reading of the Merrow controversy through the lens of union with Christ rather than covenant theology. It is special because no one has ever studied assurance using a multi-dimensional approach, whether on Boston or any other theologian. Through this research. I have gained a much deeper understanding of Scottish theology, particularly in regards to the various theological aspects of assurance of salvation. For example, I now have a more nuanced understanding of the relationship between faith and repentance and their sequence. Previously, I viewed faith and repentance more as parallel concepts, two sides of the same coin. However, I now see a clear logical sequence between them, with repentance as a fruit of faith. Moreover. I can now better reconcile theologically the idea of God's election of particular sinners and the universal offer of the gospel to all. Like Boston, I ground the universal offer of the gospel not on Christ's universal death, but also on Christ's universal administration of the covenant of grace. This understanding has enriched my perspective on theology and deepened my appreciation for the complexities and depths of the doctrine of assurance. By reading this book, I hope readers will appreciate the richness and depth of the issue of assurance. Assurance is a byproduct of salvation, which is a result of union with Christ. Therefore, assurance is grounded on union with Christ. Assurance of union with Christ is assurance of salvation. Assurance is trinitarian. By faith, believers need to the Son, commune with the Father, and experience transformation by the Spirit. Through union with Christ by faith. Believers do not merely receive the covenantal benefits, but Christ Himself, partaking of His nature, like the branches taking on the nature of the vine. Since Christ is in union and communion with the Father and the Spirit, union with Christ translates to union and communion with the Trinity. Therefore, assurance is both a gift from God and a human responsibility. God desires His children to know that they belong to God. Finally. The sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, in all these aspects, nurture believers' faith and strengthen their assurance of belonging to the whole Christ.